Hi guys, Mr. John here. This video is a follow-up to my latest video, which is a battery-powered ZVS soldering gun. And in that video I made a very silly mistake which nobody seemed to notice yet until I viewed the video like 10 times and then I thought how the heck are the MOSFETs gonna be able to turn off? Yeah. So guys, next time you see a silly mistake in my video just let me know in the comments because I tend to forget the little things. So the proper schematic will look like this. See that I added this D1 and D2. They have to be a fast diodes. They can be 1 and 41, 49, 37, UF 4007. Actually, you can use like UF 4002 and above. I'm not sure about the necessary reverse voltage here. But you have to use a fast diodes here, in this place. Their purpose is when either the transistor conducts, the gate of the opposite transistor is gonna be pulled at low, and thus it will ensure proper operation of the scene. Without these diodes it won't oscillate. Yeah, and I had a few comments about um, how to make it more efficient, how to make the soldering, how to make the tip more efficient and that's what I'm gonna show you next. Then I'm gonna cover the frequency measurement, I'm gonna show you the waveform, the waveform is gonna be somewhat sinusoidal because it's a resonant circuit. I do not know the frequency yet, it will be first time for me too. So, Let's go. For the new tip I picked this wire which is 1.1 millimeters in diameter and I'm gonna form it in a loop just like this and what I'm gonna do next is that I'm gonna go take a file and I'm gonna flatten it like that. I'm gonna file it here from on this side as well as on this side and also I can file it a little bit here on this envelope on the outer side to make it uh, to make this side a flat surface so next time I'm gonna be soldering like that it's gonna I'm gonna have much more surface area to couple the heat from the tip to the actual workpiece so let me do just that. Okay, I made the tip. And that's how it looks like. Let me try to show you here. If the camera would focus, it would be awesome. Very nice. So here you can see that I filed it off. Just like, me like I mentioned. This decreases the cross-section of this particular section. And what that does, that increases its resistance. And so I'm gonna have the most power loss exactly here on the end of the tip. So it's gonna be just what I want. Next I'm gonna install it. I don't know how much I need to file it off. It's gonna be trial and error, but we can make it through. That's not a big deal. This tip is already almost eaten away, which you can probably just make out. Or won't. Yeah, you have to trust me here. Okay, let's proceed to the tinning. And to do that, I'm gonna use a rosin and a 60 and a eutectic solder. Oh, yeah. And I can already tell that that is not working not nearly as good. Remember, this is 25 watt only. And yeah, it takes a lot, lot, lot too much time. 
I'm gonna overheat the secondary this way. The secondary here is 25 wires, but it's still quite a low cross section. It comes out at about 4.9 millimeters square millimeters worth of cross section, which is not much. And it will severely heat up. I can actually feel the heat from the from the secondary through the bottle already. So yeah, I'm gonna go and file a bit more from here to decrease the cross section even more because this way I'm just gonna bust this little device and I don't want to do that because it's handy okay here we go I filed it down to about 0.4 millimeters it's now 0.4 millimeters thick this way let's try again and we still struggle now guys, this is not working very nice. The concept is excellent, but... I have the connection heating up more, the actual terminal block heats up more than the actual tip, which is not good at all. So, as you can see, there is a reason why I use this puny wire. So... That's, I guess, what I have to live with, with this device for now. Unless I come up with an ingenious idea, which I probably won't. Okay, so the next thing, I'm gonna put this tip, if you can call it this way, back on the soldering gun. Try not to bust it, because it is on its own last legs here I'm gonna fire up my scope which is gonna make this noise eh lovely noise of a DC to DC converter running on in the audible range thank you very much Soviet engineers so okay okay so to the next question I had Mr. Carlson asked what frequency it runs at I don't honestly know yet, but I mentioned already that I know that it runs in the audible range, which I can try to like cram it really near the camera and risk <laughs> pushing the phone off of the stand. Or I can use, you guessed it, Mr. Carlson's probe, super probe. And I'm gonna demonstrate you that it runs without load. As you can see, one of the terminal block, one leg is inserted, the other is not, so it's not loaded. It runs perfectly fine with, without load. Again, I'm not gonna hook the ground, but you're still gonna be able to hear that it is indeed. Oscillating. Oh, excuse me here. I put the gain way too much. I'm gonna put it like that. Let me fine tune the thing. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear it. I don't know how old are you. Because the older you get, the worse is your hearing in terms of high frequency response. But you can already hear that the buzz changes to a slight whistle. Right here you will be, will be pro probably able to hear it. I'm 22 years old and I barely hear that whistle, so... I won't be terribly surprised if you did not. So, yeah, I failed. I'm gonna fire up the scope and I'm gonna show you the way from this. Okay, bear with me.
Okay, so sorry, but there will be handheld footage here. I'm gonna try to shake the camera not so much. So here you can see I hooked it up. Currently it's without load. So I'm gonna press the button and you watch the CRT here. As you can see, the waveform is somewhat sinusoidal. It's not really a pure sine, of course, but it is. It resembles sine wave nonetheless. It coming on and off is actually me depressing the button on accident, so sorry about that. Here you can see. And we are at 20 microseconds the division. So you can see for yourself that it takes about 3.4 divisions, which is which is this many hertz, 14.7, which is in the audible range, as I already mentioned. So now let me hook the tip back up, and I'm gonna scope just like this. Not for a long time, first, because it will burn the tip out, second, it will overheat, as any other soldering gun, they are made for on of use, low duty cycle if you may if you will and third i'm gonna melt my probe because the tip gets very hot okay in the process of triggering the scope in order for you to see the nicely triggered waveform without it walking on the screen like on a moon i burned my probe a little bit so yeah I stuck it in a little bit different place so I can show you the scope is somewhat triggered and it is now set to 5 microseconds a division. Enjoy! And as you can see already it is quite a pure sine wave. The, the tip is smoking vigorously. So I'm gonna try to memorize its position and eyeball the frequencies that way. It is about... Oh! You know what happened? This. That's what happens if you hold it for too long. If you saw, I mean, as you saw previously, it has not enough power to hit this, yet it has more than enough power to blow this. But, we saw that uh, the frequency, that the period increased almost to three divisions just before it blew up. So, that is 15 microseconds, which is, which is this, it happens to be this number, 66 kilohertz. So, I'm gonna say it runs at about 60 kilohertz because normally I won't let it do that and one little hint for you this is a power circuit so you have to run it fused and for a fuse if you gonna build the circuit just like I did if you're gonna have 25 watts let me shut off the scope here because it makes a noise strong CRT nice Okay, so if you're gonna do the thing like I did, you're gonna have about 2 amps consumption from a 12 volt battery, so I suggest you to put 3 amp fuse on the line. I do have the fuse on the end of this cable, which I won't bother showing, because the circuit runs just fine without load, and it tolerates when the tip breaks like that. When the tip is intact, you heat it up and then it breaks and then the oscillator is running with no load and that's perfectly fine. But if I'm gonna hold the button and if I'm gonna touch these two wires, a huge surge of current will appear. The circuit will consume a huge surge of current and will blow that fuse. So that's why, why I say you have to run this thing fused. 
because if you don't have views you will pop the transistors most likely which is not good especially for me because I hot glued this in, in and it's very finicky to take it apart yeah now I have to make new tip all right but nonetheless we did try another tip design which I'm gonna give it a try off camera I'm gonna experiment with it and show you the result in the next video hopefully and we measured the frequency without load as well with with load just before the load gave up okay guys if you have any questions comments <laughs> if you have any questions leave them in the comments below thanks for watching see ya